Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and in today's video we're going to be showing you how to perform a circling approach to a runway. Now this is quite exciting, something a little bit different compared to the uh, standard ILS approaches or even non-precision approaches that we do. The circling approach is largely a visual approach and for those of you who have seen the base training tutorial video here on the channel then this is going to draw a lot of influences from that video a lot of techniques from that uh, into the circling approach so if you haven't yet seen the base training video I would recommend going back and watching that before continuing with this circling approach tutorial video in this tutorial, we're going to be coming in to land on runway 16 at the Greek island of Mykonos. A nice short runway, a nice thin runway as well. So this really is probably one of the more difficult circle to land approaches that you can do here in Europe. Circle to land approaches are done for runways of which there is no real navigation aids enabling a instrumental approach to those runways and it largely basically is exactly as it sounds. We make an approach to a runway which may have an ILS or an RNAV approach and then sort of at the last minute we break off and we circle around the airport to come in and land on the opposite runway. The technique shown in this video will give you the tools you need to be able to perform a circling approach at any runway in the world that is authorized to receive them. So let's jump into the flight deck and start planning this approach. So we are currently over Athens at about 35,000 feet and we're going to start looking at our approach into Mykonos runway 16. Now we can see here from the chart we've got runway 34, runway 16. We're going to be making the circling approach today into runway 16. Circling approaches are done when there is no other means of getting into that runway through a uh, ILS procedure or RNAV perhaps. There's no instrumental procedure available for runway 16 but the prevailing winds today mean that we're going to use runway 16 because perhaps we'd have too much of a tailwind coming in on runway 34. The way we do this is to start by looking at the actual procedure designed for runway 34. So if we go and have a look we have a nice RNAV approach which would enable us to get in on runway 34 but from here we're going to then do a circling procedure to come around and land on runway 16. First thing we need to do is make sure that a circling procedure is actually allowed for this airport and if we come down here we can have a quick look and it'll tell us that first of all circling to runway 16 is available during daytime only so obviously we couldn't do this at night and if we come across here we want to check that circling to land is not authorized east of the runway so we're going to have to do this to the west hand side of the runway and the minimums for our aircraft CAT-C is 1680 feet. Now this is important because this is what we're going to descend our aircraft down to and then level off at to perform this approach. So the first thing we would do is make sure that we've got everything set up in the box for the RNAV approach to runway 34. I've already gone in and set that up as you can see here and uh, this has the various waypoints associated with the approach. We've got 512, 510, 508 and if we come back and have a look at the chart over here we can see those as shown. We've got the uh, 512, 510, 508, everything's there and we would make sure just as if we were expecting to land on runway 34 we'd have to do the approach in exactly the same way. The only difference is when we get to MK508 and at 2000 feet and we start that descent down once we get to 1680 feet we're actually going to level off the aircraft and then we're going to start making a left hand turn at a 45 degree angle away from that initial course to get us flying a downwind track and then we'll be able to come and circle the land much like we would do in the base training video that I referred to a little earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a couple more things into the uh, box and get those sorted. So what would be really nice, and we could perhaps do this uh, within a little bit more detail in the if the secondary flight plan was working. What you would normally do is you would set up a secondary flight plan to have you flying 
on to runway 16 but you wouldn't activate this until you were on the downwind leg but unfortunately the secondary flight plan in the fly-by-wire at the time of this video being filmed isn't currently working so unfortunately we can't do this step so what we are going to do however is I'm going to go to our progress page and I'm going to put in Lima Golf Mike Kilo runway 16 and pop that into the uh, in the progress page for runway 16 so I've just got our uh, bearing and distance from that I'm also going to go ahead and add in the uh, beam threshold line so if we go to our fix info and again Lima Golf Mike Kilo runway 16 and in order to do this it's just so we can see on the navigation display and I'll show you that in a moment we want to have on our navigation display just for ease of reference a, uh, a line coming out 90 degrees a beam from the threshold where we're going to start the base turn so that would be at a radial of 247 90 degrees off this initial track so let's go ahead pop that in 247 and if I pop that in there, I've now got the beam threshold showing on my navigation page, which I'm going to be able to use to know when we are beam the threshold to begin the timer before we start the base turn. If you've not seen that base training video, I do highly recommend that you go and watch that as we're going to use some of the procedures from that to complete this circling approach. But for those of you that may not have seen it yet, I'm just going to quickly go over what we're going to do in order to achieve this. So we're going to get ourselves down to the minimums for the circling approach which is 1608 feet in order to get down safely to those minimums we're going to fly the RNAV approach just as we would do as though we were going to land on runway 34 that means by this point here before we begin this three degree descent path we're going to be flaps three and landing gear down 2000 feet by Mike Kilo 508 when we get there we're going to pull the FPA three degrees and all we're going to do then is once we're on that descent we're going to push to level off at 1680 feet once we've leveled off then we are going to make a left hand turn at a 45 degree angle which would be heading 292 that's 45 degrees off of this 337 path so we're going to fly a heading of Two, sorry we're going to fly a track of 292 and when the wings are level we're going to start a timer and time for 30 seconds after we've timed for 30 seconds we're then going to fly a downwind track so that would be this track again 337 and we're going to fly that downwind track until we are a beam the threshold to runway 16 when we're abeam that threshold for runway 16, we are then going to fly for a further 51 seconds before beginning the base turn. Now, where do we get that 51 seconds from? Well, that comes because we will be flying at around 1,700 feet. And typically what we do is we fly at 3 seconds per 100 feet before making that base turn. So 3 seconds per 100 feet from being a beam the threshold before making the base turn so three seconds per hundred feet flying at 1700 feet that's 17 times 3 which equals 51 seconds now you can also take the wind component into account for this as well so if you've got a three knot tailwind you can take three seconds off that if you had a three knot headwind you would add three seconds on but we're going to be working on uh, that 51 seconds for this and uh, I'll make sure we just clear the wind here in the simulator so we shouldn't really have any winds to uh, concern ourselves with once we have timed 51 seconds from being a beam the threshold we're going to initiate the turn we're going to do a 25 degree bank and we'll slowly start a rate of descent not too much but the main thing is we want to be able to see the runway now that's easier said than done here in the captain's seat of course because we're going to be making right hand traffic ideally you'd want the uh, first officer to be making this approach because he's got much better view being able to see out of 
of the uh, out of the window as we're going to be banking over to the right hand side funnily enough though this particular airport is a captain's only landing so that brings its own challenges he's obviously going to have to have a little bit of help perhaps from the first officer just to help gauge how that approach would be made but this is a simulator so of course we can uh, if we wish we can just hop over into that first officer seat just to get a little bit of a better visual at that point then once we're on the base leg we can go flaps full we'll be able to run the landing checklist and then it is a case of just making a visual approach rolling out nicely to the final track and then landing on runway 16 so that's the theory let's go and try it in practice so here, as you can see on the moving map, we're now starting our approach. We're going to start configuring. We're getting down to 3,000 feet. We're slowing ourselves. We're going to go to flaps one and get ourselves nicely configured for this approach. Uh, for those eagle-eyed will have noticed for some reason the uh, the rat is out. Not quite sure why, but uh, feel free to uh, ignore that. Slowing down then now and we can uh, pull our speed and we can hold around 180 and you'll see this before on uh, various tutorials and live streams how to fly the, uh, the RNAV approach. Essentially at this point it is just exactly the same as uh, flying the RNAV approach. The difference will come of course when we start to go down the final approach path. So getting closer we're going to continue to configure so let's go ahead and select flaps 2. So now making that turn onto finals for runway 34, we're going to get the gear down and select flaps 3. So as we're becoming nicely established on the approach for runway 34, let's go ahead and pop the aircraft into track FPA mode. And then we're going to start that three degree descent and we're going to push the level off at 1680 feet. We obviously want to push to level off around about 100 feet above that just so it gives the aircraft chance to stabilize. As always we'll pull the uh, final descent path when we get to 0.3 miles away from 508. So let's go ahead and start to dial that in now. So we're all nicely configured and we're going to pull 3 degrees now at 0.3. Aircraft shall start to descend and then we're going to push to level off when we get to 1,700 feet. We've also now got visual with the airfield which is of course very important. When doing a circling approach you must maintain visual contact with the airfield at all times. So I'll push the level off. And just slightly late on that, as you can see, we just dropped a little bit below, so that's my fault. But we've now pushed the level off, we're happy, we can see the runway in front of us. So now we're going to make that 45 degree turn. So we're going to turn to a heading of 292. And then when the wings are level, we'll start the timer for 30 seconds. So the wings are now level. Let's start that timer. 30 seconds, then we'll turn back on the downwind of uh, 337. Thirty seconds then, let's go back and set three three seven. And this is where it would be much easier in real life just to lower your head to look down and see where that runway is, keeping it in sight at uh, at all times. So now once we get a beam that threshold, we're going to start the timer again. 
This time, as we calculated earlier, for around 50, 50 seconds, 51 seconds. At this point, when we're downwind, we would activate the secondary flight plan so we get the correct runway fixes as shown here in our uh, flight plan and on the navigation display. Sadly though, as I stated earlier, the secondary flight plan isn't currently operational in the fly-by-wire at the time that this video is being filmed. So we've just got the navigation display showing us when we're abeam, but of course we can look out. There we go, I'd say that's nicely abeam, so let's start that timer again for 51 seconds and then we can start our final descent at that point we're going to turn off the autopilot before we can do that of course in uh, track FPA mode we need to turn off the flight directors as well let's go ahead and do that now Now we can also pop us into nav mode, which means that we don't lose sight of the runway on the navigation display. So there we go, that's 51 seconds, let's set 25 degrees of bank. That's 10, 20, 5, and just lower the nose slightly, just to start the descent. We don't want a huge descent at this point, just a little bit, until we can bring our... Uh, runway back into uh, into sight. And we can now uh, start to pull flaps 3 as well. Correction, flaps f flaps full. 1, we then run the landing checklist. And there's our airport, so now it literally is a visual approach. Hundred above. Minimum. Nice weather today, so we will continue. So what's missing now, because we've not got the secondary flight plan active, we've got the wrong waypoint shown up here. It would be nice, of course, when activating that secondary flight plan, so you've got a distance from the threshold. That will also help you with your uh, profiling for descent. Three miles out, around about a thousand feet. But from this stage, it's just like any other landing. And our spoilers are deployed. Reverse green, decel. 70 knots reverses off. Sadly missed the exit, so we'd have to go to the end and uh, use the turn pad. But there we go. Hopefully that gives you uh, a little bit of an insight into performing a uh, circling approach manoeuvre. This is probably one of the tougher ones as well in uh, the Greek Isles. I've got nice clear weather today as well, but if there uh, wasn't clear weather, you obviously can be struggling sometimes to look through uh, different cloud layers and if you lose sight of the airfield then unfortunately you uh, you do have to break off that approach so guys thank you so much for watching i really hope you have enjoyed this tutorial video on the circle to land procedures if you do have any questions then please do leave a comment down below and i'll try and get back and answer those as best i can if you have enjoyed this video please don't forget to leave it a like and of course if you are new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notifications bell so you don't miss any future content and live streams thanks so much for watching everyone i look forward to seeing you all again very soon Bye-bye for now.